Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. If you're serious about solar, you're in the right place. We've got an incredible system to explore today. A 16 kilowatt hybrid setup featuring 28 high efficiency 585 watt solar panels and two 8 kilowatt hybrid inverters. This dual inverter configuration isn't just for big homes. It's a smart way to maximize efficiency and redundancy. Let's start by understanding the building blocks. solar panel string sizing. First up, the panels themselves. The heart of the system, we have 28 panels, but how do we connect them to get the most power to our inverters? This is where string sizing comes in. Our 585 watt panels typically have an operating voltage around 42 volts. Our 8 kilowatt hybrid inverters have a sweet spot, usually in the range of 120 to 450 volts DC. To optimize this, we'll arrange our 28 panels into four strings of seven panels each. That's two strings for each 8 kilowatt inverter. Why 7? Because 7 panels in series gives us about 294 volts under normal conditions. 
perfectly within our inverter's operating range, ensuring maximum power harvesting. Each string will generate around 14 amps of current. Simple, right? Step 2. Critical protections MCBs, fuses, and SPDs. Now that we have power flowing, we need to protect our investment and more importantly, ourselves. This means proper sizing of MCBs, miniature circuit breakers, fuses, and SPDs, surge protection devices. For our DC solar strings, where the current is around 15 amps, we'll use 20 to 25 AMP DC MCBs or fuses for each string. This protects against overcurrent. Then for our 8 kW AC output from each inverter, which pushes about 35 amps, we'll install robust 40 to 50 amp AC MCBs. And finally, the unsung heroes, SPDs. You'll see them on both the DC side, protecting your panels and inverters from lightning strikes and surges, and on the AC side, safeguarding your home's electrical system. They are your system's insurance policy. Step 3. Isolator switches. Your safety net. Beyond automatic protection, we need manual control. That's where isolator switches come in. These are critical safety devices. You'll notice DC isolators right near the panels and before the inverter's DC input. Typically 20 to 25 AM DC rated for our strings. These allow technicians to safely shut down the DC power from the panels during maintenance. Similarly, on the AC side, we have 40 to 50 AMP AC isolators after each inverter, letting us completely disconnect the inverter from your home's electrical system when needed. Safety first, always. Step 4. Battery sizing. Powering through the night or outage. Here's where the hybrid magic truly shines. Batteries. This is what gives you power when the sun isn't shining or the grid is down. But how big of a battery bank do you need? Battery sizing is all about your critical loads and desired backup time. Let's say you want to power 5 kilowatts of essential appliances for 4 hours. That's 20 kilowatt hours of energy. For a typical 48 volt battery system, and considering you only want to discharge batteries to about 80% to extend their lifespan, you'd need approximately 520 amp hours of battery capacity. This could mean a bank of traditional deep cycle lead acid batteries, or more likely multiple advanced 48V lithium ion life PO4 modules, which are becoming incredibly popular for their efficiency and longevity. The diagram shows one large battery bank supplying both inverters a very common and efficient setup. Step 5. Grid Supply Connection The Smart Interface Now let's talk about how this whole system interacts with your utility grid. This is crucial for seamless operation. Your main utility grid connection comes into your home's main electrical panel. Notice that little donut-shaped device called a CT or current transformer. This is super important. The CT measures the exact amount of power flowing to and from the grid. This allows your smart hybrid inverters to decide whether to send excess solar power back to the grid if net metering is allowed or to precisely limit output to only power your home's loads, preventing any export. The diagram shows your home's loads being fed by both the grid and your solar system, with the inverters able to automatically switch to battery power if the grid goes down. That's the true beauty of a hybrid system. Step 6. The Unsung Hero Earthing System Finally, and arguably the most vital for safety, the earthing system, also known as grounding. Look at all those ground symbols. Every metallic part of your solar array, the inverter chassis, your main electrical panel, everything needs to be meticulously connected to a dedicated earth electrode. This is not just a recommendation, it's a non-negotiable safety requirement. A proper earthing system provides a safe path for fault currents, preventing electric shock, and dissipates dangerous surges from lightning, protecting all your valuable equipment. Never skimp on proper earthing. So there you have it. Comprehensive breakdown of a 16.38 kW dual hybrid solar power system. From panel stringing to critical safety components, batteries and grid integration, this setup is designed for maximum efficiency, reliability and energy independence. Remember, while this guide provides a solid foundation, Always consult with certified solar professionals for your specific installation to ensure compliance with local codes and optimal performance. If you found this video helpful, smash that like button, share it with anyone considering solar, and subscribe for more in-depth energy content.
Let me know in the comments below what other solar topics you want us to cover. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.